Shalom, my name is Tony Robinson of Restoration of Torah Ministries, and we're going to uh, continue our teaching, our presentations on chiastic structures entitled Chiastic Revelations. And um, in today's uh, lesson, we're going to look at the chiastic structure of Genesis chapter 28, verse 10 through 32, verse 3. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this chiastic structure. We're going to see how it's arranged. And remember, chiastic structures are simply thematic uh, patterns, uh, th uh, thematic ways of telling stories where all of the themes in the first half will be repeated in the second half in reverse order. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with uh, Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 through 12. And this is the story of how Jacob had to leave the promised land because of uh, Esau and uh, so I call that uh, the general theme there is his exile from the promised land. It is thematically connected to Genesis chapter 32 verses 1 through 3, which is when Jacob returned to the promised land. Now I want to give you a few specific uh, thematic connections between these two passages. Um, in Genesis chapter 28 verse 6 it says, Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. And he goes on to uh, name the place Bethel. But what I want you to do is I want you to notice how he said, surely the Lord, he said something about the place. He made a, uh, he, he made um, a, a, a um, what is the word I'm looking for? He, he made a, um, uh, he noticed something about the place and then he called the place. Well, if you go to Genesis chapter 32, verses 1 through 3, it says uh, when in verse 2, when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. In other words, he uh, again, uh, he makes an observation. That was the word I was looking for. He made an observation about the place. And then it says, and he called the name of the place Machaniah. So in both of these two passages in chapter 28 and 32, Jacob makes an observation observation about where he is and then he names the place something. Another thematic connection between these two passages is the fact that angels of God appear to Jacob in both. You'll remember that in Genesis chapter 28 when he left that the angels appeared ascending and descending upon a ladder. Well, in Genesis chapter 32 in verse 1 it says Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him. So those are just some, uh, those are two of the thematic connections that connect this verse uh, in chapter 28 with uh, in chapter 32. The next thematic connection that we want to look at is Genesis chapter 28 verses 13 through 22. And uh, it talks about a pillar, a reminder of the Holy One's faithfulness. And um, if you if, if, if you'll remember, um, uh, when Jacob left, he uh, made an agreement or like a covenant, an agreement with Adonai, and he erected a pillar, which was supposed to be a reminder. Remember, he said, if you take care of me and bring me back, you know, then I'm going to build a uh, house of God, etc. And so he erected a pillar as a reminder of the faithfulness. Well, remember, Jacob fled from Laban, uh, his uncle Laban. And in Genesis 31, verses 43 through 55, uh, Jacob and Laban, or Laban in Hebrew, they erected a pillar as a reminder of the uh, of their agreement uh, that they would uh, not be aggressive towards one another. So that is the second thematic connection, uh, the second major theme of this passage. Now we move to Genesis chapter 29, verses 1 through 35, and this is how Jacob worked for Rachel and Leah. It's a, it's a description of uh, the seven years that he worked um, and he received Leah, and then he worked another seven years for Rachel. Well, this is thematically connected in the second half of this chiastic structure to Genesis chapter 31, verses 1 through 42. You remember that when Laban caught up with Jacob, uh, that Jacob finally stood up on his feet, and he began to... Um, uh, rebuke Laban. And so in this passage, Jacob is recounting the suffering and labor that he uh, had under Laban. In other words, in, Ge in Genesis 31, 1 through 42, he's recounting all of the hard work that he did, whereas in Genesis 29, 1 through 35, it is actually a passage uh, describing the work that he did. 
And that takes us to Genesis chapter uh, 30, verses 1 through 21. And this is a story about how Jacob proliferated abundantly. You remember that when he uh, first uh, made it to Padam Aram, there was just him. And uh, a few verses later, all of a sudden, uh, he has an abundance of children. Well, this is thematically connected to Genesis chapter 30, verse 25 through 43, which describes how Jacob's flocks proliferated abundantly. And again, the common theme there is reproduction. And then that's going to lead us to the central axis, which is Genesis 30, verses 22 through 26. And it's the story of the birth of Joseph. Now, in the first lesson, we learned that uh, each that that these many chiastic structures that they have uh, central axes, and uh, I want to talk to you about the two ways that the central axis functions in the next two lessons. Uh, but we're going to cover one way now. Uh, this uh, chiastic structure is an example of how the chiastic structure is the focal point or the main point of the story. It's a way, it's Adonai's way of thematically highlighting a takeaway from the story. In other words, the birth of Joseph is extremely important and Adonai highlights this by making it the central axis of a chiastic structure. So there are many times when you find the central axis of a chiastic structure, you have actually found uh, Adonai's highlight that this is important. Both Judaism and Christianity recognize that Joseph is a major messianic figure. And this right here, by making him the, his birth, the central axis of a chiastic structure, is Adonai's way of saying, hey, watch this child. He's very important. Okay, so, so what else can we learn? Uh, we've already seen how chiastic structures occur throughout the Tanakh and the New Testament writings. They're simply everywhere. Um, the other thing is that we just found out that Genesis 28 through 32 is told in a thematic pattern. Okay, and uh, once we uh, study thematically, we'll be able to see these patterns. Now, what you may not have known is that Genesis chapter 28, 10 through 32, 3 is actually a Torah portion. It is the Torah portion called Vayetse. And you know, uh, many of you know, many of you read the weekly Torah portions, and um, it is actually the Torah portion Vayetse. Now, let me let me talk to you about these Torah portions. No one knows who developed the Torah portions. Uh, most uh, Jewish scholars believe that they were probably developed a few hundred years before the first century, maybe the third or fourth century or so, but no one knows for sure. However. One thing that we can say for sure is that the rabbis who developed the Torah portions used thematic analysis as I'm teaching you now. They studied the scriptures thematically, they saw the themes, and they, con they made thematic connections. These wise rabbis of those early centuries, they did this. We know it beyond a shadow of a doubt, and the reason why we know that this is true is because many of the Torah portions themselves are chiastic structures, such as this one here, Vayetse. Shemot is another chiastic structure. Shalach is a chiastic structure. And so we know that they studied the scriptures thematically, that they knew how to make thematic connections, and that they saw these patterns because many of the Torah portions are based on um, these uh, chiastic structures that they found. So we're going to leave you with that. And um, I hope that this has been a blessing to you. And we'll continue to learn about chiastic structures uh, on our journey. And uh, may Adonai bless you tremendously. Hallelujah.